Ever heard of the Boxer Codex? Actual illustrations of ancient Filipinos, especially from 1590? Well, it tells a different story from what we have all been taught. And in the next video, we'll even show you how it has been proven by archaeology even. This is one of the most monumental finds in history, and yet still few even know about it. But you will know now. Welcome to 100 Clues. The Philippines is the ancient land of gold known as Ophir in the Bible and history. No, it's not a fable. And this has already been proven in full in the God Culture's Solomon's Gold series. At the request of many viewers, we have pulled out 100 clues from this research in which we will be highlighting briefs of the most compelling points. And yes, there are over 100. These videos are for those who have not had time to watch Solomon's Gold series, and they are easy to share with friends and family, especially skeptics. This brief video cannot replace that 50 video series, nor prove the way that it does in detail. But this will be very effective nonetheless. So go there for full evidence, but now part four of our series, 100 Clues, The Philippines is Ophir, one clue at a time. What is the Boxer Codex? Well, as many things in history, it is very poorly named for a modern professor who has nothing to do with this history other than he has studied it. Not really a very bright name at all. Amazing how we allow them to do such as it really is a deceptive practice. What it ends up doing is hiding history many times. The original owners believed to be Luis Perez das Marinas, son of a governor general in the Philippines who was killed in 1593 by the Sanglais or Chinese living in the Philippines. Now, we won't touch that. The manuscript's earliest known modern owner was Lord Ilchester. The codex was among what remained in his collection when his estate, Holland House in London, suffered from direct German shelling on September 27, 1940. The manuscript was auctioned in 1947 and came into possession of Professor Charles Ralph Boxer, thus the name inappropriately, an authority on the Far East, and after whom the document is named, of course. Again, very poor. It is now owned by the Lilly Library at Indiana University. And why have they not returned it to its rightful owner in the Philippines then? I mean, how many Filipinos are going to get to go to Indiana University of all places to see it? Essentially, they have buried it there. Why? Because this demonstrates a history someone does not want us to know. The Philippines was the ancient land of gold. The world knew this until 1891, when this began to truly get suppressed on a massive scale. And this document proves it, and archaeology has thoroughly proven this document to be true. But not quite something that's getting out there to many. But it will now. There are some of the illustrations of ancient Filipinos in 1590. You will also find some in loincloths indeed, but this class that you see here on the screen has been all but wiped out of history. And no, there were many more than five of these couples. We'll show you history defines how many. Have you ever heard this narrative? Some of you probably have not. Likely, not just 
as you haven't heard of the giant ships Ophir had, as they were a superpower in the Far East at that time. Yes, even greater than China at the time, and leading this area of the world. The Codex also shows illustrations of Japanese, Chinese, and other areas of the Far East even. However, none of the others have this amount of gold on their persons. There is no comparison, even within this document. And certainly, no such history like this in Ethiopia, in Yemen, nor India. It just doesn't exist. This is a rare story of a rare land, the ancient land of gold, Ophir, Philippines. And history backs this up. Here's what Antonio de Morga wrote in 1609 of ancient Filipinos. About their necks they wear gold necklaces, wrought like spun wax and with links in our fashion, some larger than others. On their arms they wear armlets of wrought gold, which they call calambigas, and which are very large and made in different patterns. Some wear strings of precious stones, cornelians and agates, and other blue and white stones, which they esteem highly. They wear around the legs some strings of these stones and certain cords. Now this cord, in fact, the sacred thread, is illustrated in the Boxer Codex. And the next video, we will show you it has been found along with many of these very rare pieces. One really cannot mistake. This is confirmed in the writings of de Lavazaris in 1574 as well, and he lays out even the social infrastructure of the ancient Philippines in its midst. Check this out. D. Lavazaris begins with the upper class. There are some chiefs in this island who have on their persons 10 or 12,000 ducats worth of gold in jewels. Whoa! Wait a minute. A ducat is worth approximately 150 US dollars today. So this class of Filipinos were 1.5 million US dollars in gold on their persons in public. What? Go find one other culture who is ever recorded this way in all of history. The Philippines is Ophir. To say nothing of the lands, slaves, and mines that they own. But are there just five of these so-called royal couples, as the Spanish call them, which is actually wrong, but that's okay. That was their understanding. No, there are many more, de Lavazaris writes. There are so many of these chiefs that they are innumerable. They cannot be numbered. Really? That's many thousands. So what is he describing here? The ancient form of government of the Philippines was the barangay system of many thousands of leaders, which sound an awful lot like the very same system instituted by Moses in the Bible. Hmm, odd. Then the middle class. Likewise, the individual subjects of these chiefs have a great quantity of the said jewels of gold, which they wear on their persons. Bracelets, chains, and earrings of solid gold, daggers of gold, and other very rich trinkets. So no sacred thread, perhaps, but still, most of the gold described in the upper class, and this again, many more thousands. This is not a narrative of a few, nor a royal class. 
but everyone. And the slaves, or the lower class. These are generally seen among them. And not only the chiefs and free men have plenty of these jewels, but even the slaves possess and wear gold trinkets upon their persons, openly and freely. This also speaks to a very low crime rate, realize. Virtually everyone possessed gold and wore it in public. Have you ever seen another such land? Have you ever heard of another such land? Especially one which was encountered, recorded as such in history. We're not talking about a legend here. This is fact. Then illustrated in the Boxer Codex. And next, we will show you this exact gold being described here has been found in archaeology. There is no question here. And one more confirmation. De Morga in 1609 also confirms De Lavazaris with the structure and the amount of gold, in a sense. The natives proceed more slowly in this and content themselves with what they already possess in jewels and gold ingots, handed down from antiquity and inherited from their ancestors. This is considerable, for he must be poor and wretched, who has no gold chains, calumbigas, and earrings. If one must be poor and wretched to not own such abundance of gold, it means everyone had it. But this isn't what we are taught of the ancient Philippines, is it? In fact, history begins with the Spanish many times. You know, the conquerors who rewrite history and admit it many times in their writings. The Holy Roman Empire, who stole this gold, in fact. Gee, wonder why they wouldn't want us to know this narrative. It's pretty obvious, isn't it? See, there really is no debating. The Philippines is the land of gold in all of history. And don't worry, the next clue will really bring this one home as we'll show you the archaeological evidence, the Boxer Codex, and these historic references are not a fairy tale. As man, many academics, ignorant, for centuries have claimed. But this, in fact, is proven to be truth and fact. No one can debate that. After just four short videos, there really is no doubting that the Philippines is the ancient land of gold, and no one else qualifies. Nor does anyone have this history. And we have hardly even covered anything. We're on number four of a hundred. It is time this knowledge be restored. For those about to comment in ignorance, yep, we always get them. We dare you to watch Solomon's Gold series by The God Culture, the original channel to prove the Philippines is in fact Ophir. Even here, we are breaking these into sound bites and clear points, but watch how all 100 clues tie together in history, the Bible, science, geography, language, etc., and this series will blow you away. Thank you for watching 100 Clues. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel. Don't forget to click the bell. If you wish to skip ahead, go to the God Culture YouTube channel and watch their Solomon's Gold series in English or Tagalog. There will be a link on the next screen. We can know this truth and be confident this belongs to the Philippines and no other land on earth can take it from them. And we are now proving this to such a point that no one can prove this wrong. And no one has. Until next time.